Welcome to the Entrepreneur Spotlight. Today I have Kate Trevor Thompson, and he's going to go over his very interesting entrepreneurial journey. And I'm so excited for him to share with each of y'all. And at the tail end, he's going to also share with us how we can potentially support him. So let's jump right in. Awesome. How are you doing today? I am so excited to be here. It was a big honor to meet you and to be able to get on your show here. Yeah, definitely. All right. Well, let's let's go ahead and, and jump right into your yeah, so I, I'm definitely very entrepreneurial spirit. Um, I really always was fascinated with going, even as a little kid, I would make a list of I'll get 50 cents to do this, a dollar to do that with my parents. I uh, started uh, cutting lawns at the very young age of eight years old. Nice. Um, used to have paper roots. And in fact, my father was a minister next door was the church and people had to volunteer to cut. So I would say, hey, if you want to pay me 20 bucks, I'll take your turn. And, you know, I would cut the church lawn and do different things. And so that all started at the very young age of 13. I got a job with Ripley's, believe it or not. And I actually worked there all through high school. Uh, working weekends, school evenings, obviously summer vacations, sort of followed the tourism pattern. And then I moved down the street to Guinness World of Records. Um, so very similar, but quite a bit different. And I started there just as a supervisor, quickly promoted to assistant manager. And then after two years, I was promoted to the, be the general manager. And then after a few years, just a night name change, but they called me vice president, made me feel real important. And then I actually started working for Guinness, the parent company. So they didn't own the rights in North America. So they hired me as a consultant. I got permission from the local franchise and I ran a Guinness World of Records in the Empire State Building in New York. And we completely closed it down, renovated it, restaffed it, uh, doubled the business after doing that and then started selling franchises and opened up a franchise location in uh, Los Angeles on Hollywood Boulevard. Um, still good friends with the people that owned that. And then Guinness ended up selling the rights. And so I sort of needed a different thing to do. So I was hired as a consultant still while doing my job at the Guinness to open a Hollywood wax museum in Branson, Missouri. So I opened up that location, hired all their team and basically worked as a consultant for a couple of years. Then I decided I wanted to move to America from Canada. I should have started. I lived in Canada originally, the land of opportunity. So I wanted to open a Guinness World of Records and I started in Branson where I was working, but I couldn't raise the money to get it there. And I switched to Orlando, Florida, managed to raise the money, but then Ripley's, oddly enough, bought the rights to Guinness back and wouldn't give me a franchise location. So I'd already made a second deal to open a year round haunted house and uh, called Skull Kingdom. So I moved to America, opened up this year round haunted house. Turned out it wasn't a really good business decision. We didn't make a lot of money, gotcha. but I learned a lot. Obviously, it started my path moving to the US. Um, and then I got recruited by a company called I Fly Indoor Skydiving. So they had an original location in Orlando, Florida. It wasn't very successful. It wasn't making money. And they, so they hired me. And they also had this other attraction called Sky Coaster, which is basically a big A-frame. And you get on a hanging harness and they hoist you up 300 feet. You pull your ripcord, you free fall and hit about 70 miles an hour flying through the sky. So I ran both of those attractions. They're quite hilarious because I was afraid of heights, um, but I did it anyways. Nice. And then the long story short, you know, the, the iFly wasn't that successful, but we really managed to turn it around um, and then became very successful. And then the business started growing. I did over 20 years with that company and I actually opened 46 of our 80 worldwide locations. And so I would go to a city, hire all the team members, get the business up and running. Um, and it, it was a it was a great job. And unfortunately, that ended with COVID. So that's kind of my entrepreneurial journey. And once I ended up before I lost my job, I started passively investing in real estate, which is what I'm doing now full time. And so I passively invested in 20 different syndicated deals. And now I'm switching to the sponsor side uh, where I'm sponsoring a deal, raising money. And I'm on my second one right now. 
Um, and again, all the skill sets that I learned all through my life, right, of opening businesses, renovating businesses, doing things, all of those things apply very, very well over to what I'm doing and become super passionate about it. And that, that's how we met originally at a meetup um, where I was, was talking and I was uh, on, on a panel for passive investing. Yeah, that's one thing for sure. I instantly noticed your passion. It was, you can't deny that. You're simply like involved in everything. Yeah. And your energy behind it. You, you're clearly trying to, to pursue this wholeheartedly. Yeah. There's no nothing holding you back, essentially. Yeah. And I've been very fortunate that all of the positions I had, I was able to, be, I became very passionate about everything I did. I became very passionate. You know, they used to say that I bled I Fly Blue and I Fly and I would win the, you know, the team member of the year. We had, we had the culture champions that I would win quite regularly. And I basically led that program. Um, you know, with our motto was deliver the dream of flight to everybody. And, you know, it was just, it was inspiring. And I've been very fortunate that all through my life, I've been able to do things that were super exciting, super unique, and I could tap into the passions of other people. So while I wasn't a big flyer at iFly, all of the team members were. And they love to give the joy of flight to people. So it was really, again, I've had this blessed life and we can talk about all kinds of crazy things, you know. So uh, when I was with Guinness World of Records, I had lunch with Michael Jackson. We actually gave him a Lifetime Achievement Award. Not wow. many people can say they had lunch with Michael Jackson. Cool. Um, it was right before, obviously, all the scandals broke out and he just signed the biggest record contract with Sony Records. And he actually loved Guinness. And he would come to the one in Los Angeles and buy it out and bring a bunch of people there and, and they would hang out during the night, you know, so it was, um, and even earlier in my career, I had the world's tallest woman work for me and uh, it was sort of strange. It was almost kind of like a freak show. I feel bad now, but back then, you know, I, we didn't know any better. And um, we, during the off season, she would do television appearances. So I traveled to Japan, Puerto Rico, Venezuela, uh, nice. escorting her to go on these different television shows. Uh, so it's been a again a, just a crazy blessed life, you know. Um, Robert Downey Jr. came and flew right after the Iron Man movie, and then a nice. bunch of people that worked for me or were customers did all of the skydiving stunts in his in his movie after Iron Man. Um, you know, so again, just this bizarre group of really eclectic people I got to work with and meet. Great, I love that. So awesome. And if you don't have passion about what you're doing. Um, I just couldn't live my life that way. Um, I, I just couldn't. I agree. Yes. And you're shining with it. Like no denial there. So with all of that said, thank you so much for sharing that. That's awesome. What is your why? What yeah. is what's the reason behind your passion? What's the, what's, what gets you up in the morning on the days yeah. where you don't feel it? Yeah, so let's go back a little bit with, and let's talk maybe about iFly. That's when I really started developing it. So our passion was to deliver the dream of flight to everyone. And in fact, if you go to their website and you look at All Abilities Night, we started programs that would fly people with disabilities. And I mean, I still tear up when I think about it and I haven't done it for years, um, you know, but we would fly children, you know, and I remember a mother crying saying my daughter wasn't supposed to walk and now she's flying and all of these things. And then just, again, the people that worked for me and being able to mentor them. You know, I had several people that started just as customer service agents, moved all the way up and then got relocated and ended up on their dream job as a general manager in a tunnel in Phoenix, Arizona. So being able to bring people to the next level. Um, so that was always my passion. And then when I switched over to real estate, I thought, well, this was just going to be how I made money. And it was kind of an investment thing, but I soon completely figured out a why. And so my why is very simple. So I want to take communities and prove them for people to live in them. So I want to take a community, make upgrades to the community. And my goal is that people will not say, come over to my apartment. They will say, come over to my home. That's my goal. Um, lofty goal. Haven't achieved it yet, but I'm never giving up till I do. And then I want the people that work there 
because a lot of times it's very stressful people that are property managers you know they're dealing just with repair tickets and upset tenants and all these things and i want to create a why where we create a community that supports our tenants um, you know, supports the team and so that they can achieve their why, which I'm sure is just to have a great job and enjoy what they do and help their residents feel like they come home. And then the third one is to take people so they invest in my deals and they make passive income. You know, so Warren Buffett says that if you don't find a make way to make money to, while you're sleeping, you will work till you die. So my why now is to get a thousand people financial independence through investing in real estate. Um, I started with 100, but it didn't sound exciting enough, so I made it 1,000, um, you know, big, hairy, audacious goal. And then the goal is they can take whatever their why is, right? So their why could be early retirement, could be college education for their children, could be to travel the world, could be to support a charity, whatever their why is, I'm now empowering them to create their why. And so I know it sounds a bit corny, but it's I'm really passionate about it. And I think that that the world will be a better place if I can achieve any you know, any portion of my of my why. I think it's wonderful personally. <clears throat> also, with the why and your experience, what is maybe a few different or what are a few different wisdom nuggets that you have that you'd like to share with everybody? Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, so the, the most important thing for somebody starting out, right, the world is a very selfish place. And if you can become unselfish and if you can look at things and say, what can I do for you? I love uh, what am I going to get out of it? You know, again, um, Jim Rohn says, you know, you can get what you want if you give everybody else what they would, what they want or need. Um, so you have to be able to do those things. So find a way for you to serve somebody else, to be, be of service to somebody else, to just make their day, whatever it is, um, make sure that you can, you can do those things. And then that's going to help you. It's going to help them. And, you know, it's just doing things for people, whether they, whatever, it, it always pays back. There's never instance where I've gone out of my way to help. And maybe, you know, they don't appreciate it or whatever. But at the end of the day, I, I feel good that I did it. Beautiful. Yeah. I love it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and just be of service and, you know, and work hard. I mean, I work hard, right? You know, I'm excited and I do things, but, you know, I'm in my office. I work hard every day and I've always worked hard, you know, even as a young man and, um, you know, uh, because my why is not sitting on a beach. My why is not sitting on a beach. You know, my why is to be, you know, to be in control of my life and make other people's lives better. Exactly. Um, but if your why is sitting on a beach, go for it. Right. I, I feel that deeply. I have a similar why. I love to help others. So that's that's wonderful. Uh, in your your failures, is there anything that you learned in those moments that you wish you had known prior to? that could help other people potentially. Yeah, so definitely, you know, I always believe you learn more in your failures than you do in your successes. Um, and in fact, somebody quoted something, I wish I could remember it, but basically, um, oh, I can't remember it now, but, but, but learning from your failures is super powerful. And it's easy for us to get down when something goes wrong, right? But, you know, I worked for this guy and he was fabulous. And he would always say, if you're not making mistakes, you're doing nothing. Um, if you're not making, let's go do something and then learn from it. Right. He was very passionate about let's make a plan. Let's execute the plan and let's not debrief while we're executing. Whatever happens, happens. And then let's look back and debrief and see what we can learn. Um, and he said, it's only a mistake if you make it twice, <laughs> um, you know, which was a he was a very wise guy, you know, you know but uh, he was very driven and not afraid to do new things. And I think that's what entrepreneurs are, right? Yes. People, people that work for other people, you know, um, you know, they, they, I call it, they're living somebody else's dream really. And I'd rather live my own dream. And, and even though all of my jobs were working for people up until now, um, I still took a very entrepreneurial approach. You know, it was my job, my business, my role, my thing to do. And clearly there's guidelines when you work for somebody and things, um, but nobody ever said, calm down and don't work so hard. <laughs> it's 
very true. You get what you put out. And it's even yeah. just like the, the giving piece too, right? Yeah. But I'll but, be honest, one of the biggest mistakes I made, and I can't fix it, um, was I wish I had started investing in real estate early. Um, you know, they say, don't wait to invest in real estate, invest in real estate and wait. So I didn't start investing in real estate and enjoying this concept of passive income money while I slept. You know, I had some stocks and some things, but, you know, really no money making, you know, serious money while I slept. No big tax advantage things. And so I would say the one thing is, you know, try to start early and then play the compound effect. And a lot of people don't understand the power of the compound effect. You know, so in theory, you want to double your money every five years. So just talk about it briefly. If you had saved up $100,000 and in five years it was $200,000 and then in five years it's $400,000 and then in five years it's $800,000 in five years it's $1.6 million in five years it's $3.2 million. I think I've hit about 25 years. So if I had started 25 years ago, um, that original $100,000 would be $3 million today. Yeah. life altering um and you know completely life altering and so the one thing if you know since i'm very passionate about real estate now i implore people to be entrepreneurial go make your money and then be wise with that money don't go buy that fancy sports car don't do all these things don't do things that depreciate or go away do things that create value and then once you start creating this value through the passive income then you can use that to reward yourself with the, the toys or whatever you want, right? Love, it. Love that. Yeah. And there's a mindset shift. And yeah, big time. With just the narrative around like 401ks and having yeah. a financial advisor, you know, when I became a, a real estate investor or entered that world, so to speak, I started realizing just the fear around just doing anything different from everyone else. And yeah. it's so backwards. Yes, it <laughs> you is. Know, it's interesting. But yeah, thank you for sharing that. I appreciate it. Um, last, but definitely not least, I know you already covered a little bit of it. What can we do for you? Is there anything that you are needing currently support in or potentially you're looking for something in your business? Yeah, so what I'm looking for, to be honest, is the people that are interested in learning about passive investing. You know, so if you know somebody who, who they're a little bit afraid of it, right? A lot of people think, oh, I don't want to do that because it's toilets, tenants, and trash. And I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you put your money into somebody else's syndication, somebody else's deal. They do all the work and you reap the rewards. So if anybody knows of anybody that they think, OK, this would be something that would be really good idea for them, because um, a lot of people, when they think of investing in real estate, it's very scary. And I'll be honest, that's half of the reason I didn't start it. You know, I used to think, well, I don't want to rehab a house. I get ripped off when I rehab my own house. Why do I want to make that my job? Right. And, it, and it was very intimidating. And once I kind of realized um, now, again, I know you've got to save the money to have the money to invest. So I get that. But you know, if people know people out there that are looking for a way to invest their money, get some tax advantages, um, real estate in housing, you know, there's always a shortage in need of housing, um, you know, reach out to me and I'm not going to try to sell them to invest in my deal before we spend some time educating. Um, cause that's really important. You need to understand what are you doing? What are the risk rewards? Is this the right one for you? Absolutely. Um, and that's very important. And I, I'm, I'm okay to be able to do that. And, you know, um, if, if my deal is not right, that's not why I want to do it. I want to do it so that they can go do their why. I love it. What is the best way for someone to get in contact with you? Yeah. So my email is KTT at Niagara-investments.com and Niagara because I'm from Niagara Falls. Um, I'm also very active on LinkedIn and Facebook. Um, on Facebook, you got to kind of tell me a little, if I see you ask me a request and we you're not into real estate or you do anything, you kind of got to get my attention. LinkedIn's a little different. I'll look at your business profile and, you know, um, but 
Facebook's a little more personal. So I, I'll be honest, there's probably 200 people I haven't accepted yet because I don't know who they are, or where they came from. And, uh, yeah. and it's also getting used a lot more by bots that want to do other things, you know, semi Bitcoin and stuff. Uh, so, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, um, but, but definitely LinkedIn's a great place or, or that email. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Thanks for what you're doing, bringing, you know, uh, this is something people need to hear. You know, people need need to learn about, you know, being entrepreneurial. It's really, I mean, even if you have a job, you can still be entrepreneurial within your job. I did that for years and outside of it. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you for your servant's heart and just wanting to give back. It's beautiful. Oh, it's my pleasure. Yeah, it's been nice to get to know you. Yes, appreciate you. And everybody, thank you for watching. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. <laughs> Take care. Take care.